So hello viewers, my team name is PHSSCR1 and I am Chong Li Ian. My team ID is SG1808. I am from Singapore and I'm taking and I have almost 2.5 years of experience with RoboCup Co Space Rescue. I'm taking part in the RoboCup Asian Pacific Co Space Rescue competition which my mission is to collect as many objects as possible on the field and deposit them into the banks. The robot also has to avoid the traps because these traps makes you lose all the objects you are holding. I got a score of 1195 in the pre preliminary round. So some problems faced include the deposit banks were not located very far away from the objects. The traps and position info lost box interrupted my program and objects were scarce and scattered at very inconvenient places. These places re are really hard to get me to the deposit bank efficiently. So some solutions I come up was I separated my map into top and bottom marked by that black line. Purple lines are the lines that I follow when my robots are full. These purple lines are just imaginary lines. For example, when y is equal to around 70, it will be at the bottom. So when it's at the bottom, when it's below the y equals 70 line, right, it will go up before it moves to the right. And if it's at the top, it will go to the top purple line and move towards the deposit. So the more detailed flowchart plan is here. If my robot is not full, I'll continue searching for objects. And if it's full, I'll check if the robot is at the top or bottom. So if it's at the bottom, I will head to the bottom purple line and go to the deposit. If it's at the top, I'll go to the I'll go and ask myself a question whether the robot is at the left or at the right, separated by the wall right beside the deposit. If it's at the left, then it will head to the top purple line and it will just dive towards the deposit. It's, if it's at the right, it will head out either from the top or the bottom and go into the left area and go to the purple line and go into the deposit. So process of debugging this strategy, some values I key in were not accurate. Like the y equals to 70 line, that time I wrote y equals to 60 and it keeps hitting the wall. There was a circular pillar there. I also have programmed the robot to move forward when it encounters a position info box but the position info box was right on the y equals to 70 line so when it's facing down it moves forward then when it goes back into the tracking program it will just turn back into the box and it will keep moving forward again and it will go into a program so it ends up going into the process of debugging this strategy Robot hardly gets full because of the widely scattered objects and the inconvenient placement of them. Tracking program does not execute when the robot is full and the robot ends up scouting the entire map, wasting a lot of time. Some factors that help me with these problems include the traps are being huge. When the traps are huge, the yellow area, the warning zone, will be much larger so that my speed can increase much more. Last time my default speed used to be 60, now I can increase it to 80 because of the warning zone being huge. When the warning zone is very small and you have a very high speed, before the trap program can be executed, you'll still be moving forward and you'll end up hitting the trap. Deposit banks are located near the walls and can be easily tracked. For example, these two deposit banks are located right beside walls, so I can just follow the walls and get into them. And there are also very few obstacles other than a song. There are very few walls other than the pillars and the wall at the song that prevents you from getting to the other side. So what else have I done or make use in this map 
also broke down the main task down into many small tasks which includes getting a robot to go into a special zone at the start of the match so that it can collect more points, getting a robot to avoid avoid the borders in a clockwise direction. Because when it avoids in a clockwise direction, you it will go into the deposit much better because there's a deposit at the right bottom right of the map. I also use online C compilers when my code failed to work or debug because one time I forgot to add a semicolon but I couldn't find where it was and the online C compiler helped me a lot. I also found other strategies when my previous ones failed e.g. my wall tailing. I also consulted with my friends who are better at C programming and learn how to execute my strategies like tracking the deposit. So my cycle of programming is to start with the brainstorming. I'm thinking on how to what strategies I need to execute. And after that, after the thinking, I'll execute my strategies. After the execution, I'll go debug to see if I can improve it more. Then after all these strategies are done, I'll think of new strategies and the cycle continues. So my conclusion, my results were actually below expectations because I did not manage 24 hours well. I could have done a better job if I did a program that allows the robot to find objects faster because on that day, the objects were very, very little. And if the same challenge is given, I will spend the entire 24 hours on this challenge and the 3 step cycle to make my program a masterpiece. So my learning experience is that the most dominant thing in every challenge or everything in life is time. Time limits whatever we can do in life but we have to learn how to manage time so that we can achieve as much as we want in a given time limit. And also time is not the main thing but it's the only thing that we are given for free, so treasuring it is really important.